Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. And welcome to part five in my buttercream series. So I thought I'd break things up a little bit. I've been making lots of different types of buttercreams and today we're gonna talk all about coloring those buttercreams. So firstly what I did was I wanted to color something that was very, very vibrant. So of course I went with red. As we know, the holidays are going to be coming up and red is going to be all over the place. I also had lots of requests to talk about red buttercream. So there's lots of different ways that you can actually color red buttercream cream. You can use something like a gel food colorant, which I think is mostly the type of colorant that you're going to be using anyway. Some of you might opt for something like a powdered food coloring, or you might opt for a natural food colorant. Now I will say that there are pros and cons to each of them. So firstly, let's talk about gel food coloring. So with gel food coloring, you're going to be able to reach a vibrancy a lot faster than with those other types of products. And what I mean by that is the development of color happens a little bit faster with gel food coloring and I also find that you need less product. You can use powdered which is great and what I like about powdered is it doesn't leave as much of a taste behind. That being said though, it does take a little bit more product to actually color everything. And after all is said and done, of course, we're looking for something that is budget friendly. So when we're coloring with powdered food coloring, you're gonna have to use a lot more product and therefore it's not as cost effective. Now, when it comes to natural food colorants, this is fantastic. But the thing is, is that you're not gonna be able to find a natural equivalent for every single type of color. That and the fact that you won't be able to achieve as much vibrancy as if you use a gel food colorant. So today I am going to be mainly focusing on coloring things with gel food coloring. It's my go-to because it colors so well. So when it comes to things like coloring pastel colors, it really is very simple. You want to go with as little colorant as possible and always build your way up from there. Sometimes what I like to do, because those squeeze bottles are not really the best measure of things, get a toothpick and put a little bit from your squeeze bottle onto there and then place it onto your buttercream. This way you remain a little bit more in control because if you don't, it really is hard to reverse. You can add in white food coloring, but it never quite gets it back to the same way that it was if you had just added less colorant. Now that's the easy part. Let's talk about vibrant food coloring. So I wanted to do an experiment for you so that you could clearly see the difference. Now I've heard time and time again that heating up your buttercream is going to give it a more vibrant color. I've even given this tip before in a short of mine and it does work, but there is a flip side to it. Now whenever I'm utilizing buttercream, I want to make sure that it is fully, fully whipped. If you don't fully whip your buttercream, then you're really not getting its full potential. It's not going to be as smooth and as airy and as light as it possibly can be. So sure, you can add that heat in, but then what's gonna happen is when you re-whip it a little bit, and you whip it up to the texture that I like to whip my buttercreams up to, it's going to get lighter. So for me, I think that the better choice to getting vibrant color is time. When you have time on your side, you're going to be able to reach that vibrant color. So I did a little experiment where I colored this buttercream the night before, and now taking it out, I can see that the buttercream has darkened significantly. However, I need to re-whip this because I can't simply use it the way it is. So we're going to see what that buttercream color looks like now. As you can see, as I'm whipping it and it's coming together, it is getting lighter again. This is going to happen, but I still notice that it does look a little bit darker than when I had initially dyed it yesterday. That being said, this proves to me that if I just add in my colorant and I make sure to put it on top of my cake or my cupcakes and then I leave it overnight, that vibrancy is naturally going to develop. So if I know that I want to make perfect red buttercream, I need to go a couple shades lighter than what I think I need and then that way when I put it onto the cake and I wait a little bit, it is going to develop the color over time. That being said, I know that red specifically poses a bit of an issue. I mean, all food coloring does have a slight taste, but with red food coloring, this has 
a lot of taste. So in order to combat that, I would say using powdered coloring is a good option because I find it doesn't leave that taste behind. But like I mentioned, you're going to taste it a little bit. There are also options that are called no taste red and that will help. The other way to get those vibrant colors is to add in other colors. So what I did was I started with a little bit of pink in this batch and I wanted to make sure that it just had a little bit of a base so that I could bring up that color with a little bit less red to it. But that being said, you're still going to be using a lot of red food coloring in your stuff. So just be prepared that if somebody asks you to make something with vibrant red, you warn them and tell them there is going to be quite a bit of food coloring in here. I want to give you a direct comparison here. Now my experiment didn't fail, but it's really, really hard to see on camera. So this is the one that has a little bit of that pink in there with the added red. And keep in mind that this does have a lot more food coloring than the batch that I left in overnight. So we do have that really nice vibrant color and I got this color pretty instantaneously. Whereas the one that I kept overnight has a little bit more of a deeper color with less food coloring. So I prefer this method because because it just gives me that really nice rich color and I can afford to do a little bit less food coloring in here. But in conclusion, the way that we make those really vibrant colors is time. That to me is the best way to go. Yes, you can use heat and this is a very popular thing to do, but because I always like to re-whip my buttercreams before using them, I find that the better option is time. Now in terms of which colorants are my absolute favorite and which ones are actually true to their color, I find you can't go wrong with Chef Master or Americolor. And this is not a sponsored video, so it is very much my honest truth. I like to be as transparent as possible on this channel because when I first started making cakes, it really, really helped when people showed me the products that they actually love. And these are products that I always have on hand and I buy them with my own money very, very frequently. Now let's talk about those colorings that you can get from the grocery store. Those are far too loose. You're not going to be able to achieve the color. For years, my mom would obviously only know about and only purchase those food colorings, and I never understood, how do we get those vibrant colors? And the truth of the matter is, those are great, especially if you're in a desperate pinch and that's all your grocery store has, but you're really gonna get pastel colors every single time because there's a lot of water content in those. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. And I hope you guys are enjoying my buttercream series. Let me know down in the comments below if there's anything that you want me to go over that you just really, really want to make sure that I don't miss. But I have plenty more coming up. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!